Okay, I am going to sit here and talk for a while, and I think that if you've looked at the title just for five seconds, you know exactly what I'm pissed about. Now, in the news today, I saw GameStop in the news. Now, I didn't want to get into the whole credit card thing, but obviously I'm going to have to, and I'm going to sit here and add to the conversation by going a little bit outside of video games for five seconds to sit here and tell people about debt. The loans that are going out right now are some of the highest in the world, especially for America. We have income inequality up the ass. And the fact of the matter is there is a far better way for a gaming store to sit here and serve their customers instead of putting them in debt for video games that cost 60 to 80 bucks or whatever. Now, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to have in the underbar a link to Americans having a debt problem. I'm going to sit here and um, before I get and start talking about GameStop, I want to talk about the debt problem. Now, one in three adults with a credit history, 77 million people are just so far behind in their debt payments that they have been put into collections for a number of bills. That means non-mortgage debt, credit card bills, car loans, medical bills, child support payments, and parking tickets are put into debt into collections for 77 million people. On top of that, the debt collections range from $25 to $125,000. The average is $5,200. That's the median average. Now, banks won't lend. But the fact of the matter is, everybody is in debt, except for the really, really rich people. Now, Nevada, I was in Nevada. I got into a little debt, and luckily, I was able to get out of it through a lot of crazy, crazy, crazy things that I can't sit here and say that a lot of people have access to. But, Nevada, a lot of people were trying to get homes and mortgages out there. And what would happen is that a lot of people are basically in debt, especially in the Las Vegas area, where they gamble, which is considered a tax, where you basically pay into gambling, they don't pay out as much, and the big casinos don't really get taxed all that much because our federal pay rate for taxation on gambling is about maybe 18%, 30%, something like that. I don't know too much about it. I could look into it later on, but that's another story. North Dakota has the lowest percentage of debt because they don't really have a lot of people per capita. And the District of Columbia has the lowest average dollar because they have a higher um, um, increase wage. Now, the South has the highest percentage of people that are in debt, 44%. The Northeast has the lowest at 30%. The reason being that the South has minimum wage laws that allow people to get paid $10 an hour so they have to sit here and put other things on debt in some way, shape, or form. Whereas the Northeast, they have higher rates, higher wages. With those higher wages, less people are in debt. So Texas has the highest percentage of at 51%. So, and that's McAllen, Texas has like that many people that are in debt collections and it's too expensive to go to school. Credit cards aren't going to sit here and pay your bills. And then on top of that, people are going into debt because they have mortgage payments and mortgage payments are 4%. It's not that much, not, not as much as a credit card. So with this in mind, and I'm going to just stop at the begin at that beginning. You can read the rest of the article down in the underbar. What in the hell makes you think that anybody is going to want a credit card at 30 freaking percent or close to 30 percent, 27 percent or whatever? Amazon says 26 percent because I sat here and looked at Alpha Omega Sin and I'm going to put him in the underbar since I looked at him. But the fact of the matter is you have so many people that are struggling to get by. You want to sit here and put them into debt and you expect to get more money by getting your pound of flesh from people that 
already are struggling to pay bills. So, how in the hell does this make sense for GameStop except to sit here and put their own consumer customers into debt? It makes no freaking sense. And the fact of the matter is that them putting people into debt, trying to sit here and make a bank of interest is absolutely ridiculous. You leave that for these bigger banks and for quite frankly putting games on debt is a horrible idea and I know that there's going to be some desperate people because we can see the statistics on that one in three people are going to be desperate to try to get something and try to pay off their loans and try to do that but it's not going to work but that is going to harm credit scores tip employers hiring decisions risk access to mortgages and then just increase insurance costs there is no way that getting a, a credit card at damn near 30 percent that is worse than not even a pawn shop that's worse than a what is that place called it is absolutely worse than a pawn shop or even a um temporary loan service you you don't need something like this but this is what GameStop is trying to do to sit here and remain solvent instead of serving the customers and trying to find a better way. And they're going to try to sell a credit card? Folks, this is absolutely stupid. And I'm not even going to get into the th thumb printing or finger printing. The fact of the matter is, if you haven't figured it out by now that that is absolutely insane and crazy for anything, Quite frankly, I can't help you on that. But I'm just going to keep it at that. You all can look at this debt collections and see it from CNN. I'm, I got to go because I'm absolutely just livid and insane with anger at this. But I'm not going to sit here and pay for a credit card and put my gaming hobby on loan. See you all next time.